I ever get in a plane again? Spiders? I wonder if I could Scorpions. survive. Snakes? What if there's no electricity? Elephants? Coconuts? It's not like it's a possibility anyway. As long as I just don't fly. <laughs> That could have been me. I need to make sure I'm prepared. Which one of you do I take? So you're on an island stranded. What do you do? How do I open you? Well, there's nothing better to do. Let's choose some games to play. I remember this being a question in the Wimpy Kid Do It Yourself book. Theoretically, if you had a TV, consoles, electricity, considering that all cards are on the table, no limits, you have internet, at that point, why even leave the house? Here are my five games I would bring stranded. This is in the top five list, more so recommendations. I have a passion for old PC computer games. Warcraft, Starcraft, Fate, Star Wars. But out of all of them, Roller Coaster Tycoon is my favorite. <laughs> It's one of those games where it's all about the gameplay. No story, no overly explained tutorials, no talking, just game. It's fairly simple, but can get very challenging. Some missions you might have to create a bizzing park from nothing, or get a park out of debt. It's an incredibly satisfying game. You get to see your physical park brought to life. I love the scenarios where you make everything. It starts off as quiet and tranquil to... This is a game I will never get tired of playing. Your choices vary dramatically where you place objects or what rides you create or delete. You can get very creative too with some of the rides and the scenery as well. These are some of the rides that I've made, but others are just as cool and detailed. Roller Coaster Tycoon is a never ending game that I have consistently gone back to over the last 15 years. If you add the DLC as well, Roller Coaster Tycoon is a game you can put well over a thousand hours into. There's plenty of content to last me on the island. Few games are as crazy and over the top as the Twisted Metal series. Being PlayStation's longest running first party series, Twisted Metal is one of the simplest but most addictive games to play. Basically, cars and machine guns. Now go turn the competition into roadkill. Everyone has their favorite game in the series, but arguably the best is Twisted Metal 2 World Tour. <laughs> Twisted Metal 2 is one of those rare sequels that dramatically improved Everything. Better cars, controls, music, stages, graphics, everything was practically improved for the better here. Single player wise, Twisted Metal 2 is fantastic. You pick from a group of crazed maniacs, whether it be a 150 year old war veteran, a man morphed between two death wheels, or even the Grim Reaper himself. All of the characters are interesting and awesome. Each car as well has a special power, whether it be a boomerang, a flamethrower, or chompers. The gameplay is so addictive here, and it never gets old for me. Like Roller Coaster Tycoon, this is another game I've played consistently over the last 15 years. Now, single player, Twisted Metal 2 is great, but multiplayer, this is one of the best split screen games of all time. Now, if I'm stranded with a friend, perfect, but the game is still so much fun, and you can get a ton of play hours out of it. RPGs are one of my favorite genres, period. Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest, Ni no Kume. These are always a blast to play, but arguably one of my favorite is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door.
This is one of my favorite games of all time. I have played this game every year since I bought it nearly 15 years ago. This game is in dire need of a re-release because, oh boy. This is a rare RPG where everything mashes perfectly. The writing is funny and witty with an easy to understand gameplay. You learn that contact lenses are canon to the Mario universe. You take a balloon to a wrestling match and fight a bird that reminds me of the Hulkster. You help the guys from Sunshine who are the mafia in Rogueport. There's a noose in Town Square. Wait. Thousand Year Door is fantastic with so many different memorable characters and story beats. The puzzles and the mysteries you solve are not extremely difficult, but there is a level of thought here that does make you scratch your head every once in a while. Even though it's linear in format compared to the last two games, there is so much content packed on the disc. Now, Nintendo, remaster it. One of my favorite story-based games is 2010's Epic Mickey. Mickey Mouse is one of the most iconic movie mascots, period. But over the years, his games have been hit or miss. Epic Mickey rectified all the bad ones, though, with one of the most interesting stories told. I love the dark, twisted atmosphere of Wasteland, being a massive Disney fan, seeing a mirrored version of the castle, Toontown, or even Pirates of the Caribbean is awesome awesome. Yes, the game does have its issues, but the positives have always outweighed the negative. The controls are fluid, especially when aiming because of the Wii's motion controls. The ability to paint the town back to order and fix Wasteland or destroy and become the villain is an awesome concept. I'm going to go more in depth in a later video, but Epic Mickey is a game that I have religiously played every year to 100% since launch. I cannot praise this game enough. one of the most replayable games of all time. Guitar Hero 3 has one of the best song lineups in history. Slow Ride, Paint It Black, Welcome to the Jungle, and obviously Through the Fire and the Flames. There's something so satisfying to have a fake guitar playing real music. What more do I say? The replay value here is so high where it's almost impossible to play on an expert right away. But over time, you get more skilled with how the fretboard works and how fast your fingers can move. The best way to play this is to grab a headset and crank the volume all the way as you jam out. 